Welcome to the NCLEX Review, where I help you review all the things you need to know for NCLEX. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. Okay, let's review the musculoskeletal system. So first we're gonna talk about injuries. So risk factors include autoimmune disorders, calcium deficiency, falls, hypogercemia, infection, medications, metabolic disorders, neoplastic disorders, obesity, and postmenopausal states. So we can have either a strain or a sprain. So the difference is that a strain is an excessive stretching of the muscle or tendon, whereas a sprain is a stretching of a ligament, usually caused by a twisting motion. Signs and symptoms include pain and swelling for a sprain. Our nursing interventions for a strain are gonna be cold and heat application, exercise, anti-inflammatory and muscle relaxant medications, whereas for a sprain, we're going to use something called RICE. So rest, ice, compression or cast, and elevation. So if you get a question asking about heat, remember that heat is only on a strain. So now let's talk about types of fractures. So we have a closed or simple fracture. This is skin over the fracture area may remain intact. Communited fracture, the bone is splinted or crushed with numerous fragments. Complete is bone is completely separated by a break into two parts. Then we have compression. This is fractured bone is compressed by two other bones. We have depressed where the bone fragments are pushed inward. There's green stick. One side of the bone is broken and the other side is bent, most common in children. Impacted, so part of the bone is driven into another bone. Then we have incomplete, so the fracture line does not extend the entire width of the bone. We have oblique, which the fracture line runs on an angle. We have an open or compound. This is the bone is exposed to air through a break in the skin. For this, it's important. We want to watch for infection, cover the wound with a simple sterile dressing. Then we can have pathological, which the fracture is due to weakness of the bone structure. And then we can have transverse, where the bone fracture is straight across. So signs and symptoms of a fracture include the five P's of a fracture. So pain, pallor, pulselessness, paresthesia, and polar, which is cold. They're gonna have decreased muscle strength, an obvious deformity, crepitus, so if you feel it, you can feel it like creaking, and edema and muscle spasms. So then complications of a fracture. So things we want to look for, make sure, or a complication is a fat emboli, a pulmonary emboli, compartment sim syndrome, infection, and a vascular necrosis. Our interventions include immobilizing the fracture. They may need an open or closed reduction, internal or external fixation, and traction or cap. All right, so let's talk about a fractured hip. So risk for hemorrhage. Nursing interventions are monitor for signs of delirium, maintain leg and hip proper alignment and prevent rotation, elevate the head of the bed 30 to 40 degrees for meals only, avoid weight bearing on affected leg, keep post-op leg extended, supported and elevated when standing up, and monitor neurovascular status of the extremity, and avoid crossing the legs in any activity that requires bending. So these are important. Complications of fractures. Complications of fractures. So we had discussed earlier a fat emboli. So this can occur after a fracture. So a long bone fracture is the greatest risk. Our, sign, our signs and symptoms include restlessness, hypoxemia, changes in level of consciousness, tachycardia, hypotension, and shortness of breath. Our nursing interventions are give them oxygen if needed, IV fluids, monitor respiratory status, vital signs, and bed rest. 
Then we have compartment syndrome. So this is a pressure increases in a muscle group, usually after a cast has been placed, which decreased blood flow leads to tissue ischemia and neurovascular impairment. And after four to six hours of this syndrome, neurovascular damage is irreversible. So this is very important that we monitor for this. Signs and symptoms, paresthesia, limb pain, pressure, pallor, pulselessness distal to the area, and paralysis. For nursing interventions, we want to notify the doctor. They're probably going to have to do a fasciotomy to relieve pressure buildup or loosen the restrictive cast. And then avascular necrosis. So when a fracture interrupts blood supply to the bone, which can result in bone death. Okay, so let's talk about some nursing interventions related to the muscular skeletal system. So first we have Buck's traction. This alleviates muscle spasms and immobilizes the limb. Our nursing interventions include ensuring proper body alignment, weights hang freely and don't touch the floor, do not remove weights without a doctor's order, ensure that pulleys are not obstructed, and elevate foot of bed and check ropes for fraying. Then we have cast care. So teaching is going to be to keep the cast elevated, allow two to allow 24 to 72 hours for a cast to dry, handle a wet cast with palms of hands, turn the extremity every one to two hours to allow circulation, use a hair dryer on a cool setting to help with the drying process, do not insert any object into the cast to relieve itching. This is very important. Monitor for signs of infection and keep the cast clean and dry. Our nursing interventions are to monitor the cast of extremity for circulation impairment. So we're looking for pain, discoloration, numbness, swelling, coolness, tingling, and diminished pulse. Then when it comes to crutches, so we want to make sure the crutches are measured properly. They should be two to three finger widths between the axilla space and the arm piece. Elbows should be flexed 20 to 30. Should stand on the patient's affected side when ambulating. Do not rest axilla on the axillary bars and stop ambulation if numbness or tingling occurs in hands or arms. When assisting the client with crutches to sit to stand, we place the unaffected leg against the front of chair. We move the crutches to the affected side. Grasp the arm of the chair with the hand on the unaffected side. When lowering self into the chair, flex the knees of the unaffected leg while placing the affected leg straight out in front. Reverse the steps to remove from sitting to stand. All right, so let's talk about going, down, going up and down the stairs. The client moves the unaffected leg first. The client moves the affected leg and the crutches up. Going down the stairs, the client moves the crutches and the affected leg down, and then the client moves the unaffected leg down. So let's talk about some medical diagnoses related to the muscular skeletal system. So first we have rheumatoid arthritis. This is an autoimmune disease that leads to chronic systemic inflammation, destruction of connective tissue, and synovial membranes in the joints, and ultimately leads to dislocation and permanent deformity of the joints. Signs and symptoms include inflammation of the joints, pain and stiffness in the morning greater than 30 minutes, muscle atrophy, spongy joints, and weight loss. Our nursing interventions include rheumatoid factor blood tests to confirm diagnoses, range of motion exercises using hot and cold, rest and activity balance, prevent flexion of contractures, avoid weight bearing on inflamed joints, use chair with a high back, and a small pillow when laying down. Then we have osteoarthritis. This is a progressive deterioration of articular cartilage in the peripheral and axillal joints, mostly on weight-bearing joints, hips, knees, hands. The cause is unknown, though it could be trauma, aging, obesity, genetics, and smoking. Signs and symptoms are pain that increases with activity. So these are like the key things. So rheumatoid arthritis, pain and stiffness in the morning for greater than 30 minutes. Key point. 
for osteoarthritis, pain that increases with activity and decreases with rest and increases with temperature change. You'll also see Heberden's or Bouchard's nodes. So here is another key point. And you'll also see crepitus. Our nursing interventions for osteoarthritis are pain and corticosteroid meds, avoid flexions of knees and hips, avoid large pillows when laying, apply cold packs when joint is inflamed, and balance activity and rest and limit activity when in pain. Then we have osteoporosis. So this is bone demineralization leading to fragile bones and risk for fractures. Risk factors include smoking, early menopause, alcohol use, family history, being a female, increased age, low calcium intake, sedentary lifestyle, thin and small frame, European or Asian race. Signs and symptoms are possibly asymptomatic. They might have back pain with palpitations after lifting, bending, or stooping, pelvic or hip pain, balance problem, a decline in height, or kyphosis, and there is a risk for pathological fractures. Our nursing interventions are to move them gently, assist with ambulation if unsteady, gentle range of motion exercises, and a firm mattress. Now let's talk about amputation of a lower extremity post-op. So this is going to be surgical removal of a limb, and nursing interventions are monitor for bleeding and drainage, explain phantom limb syndrome or phantom limb pain, do not elevate residual limb on pillow, in the first 24 hours, elevate the foot of bed to reduce edema. After, keep the bed flat to prevent flexion contractures. And after 24 to 48 hours, put the patient in a prone position to stretch the muscles. Then we have gout. This is a buildup of uric crystals in the joints due to high uric acid in the body. We're going to have painful joints, something called tophi, which are hard nodules arthritis, renal stones, and inflammation of the small joints, specifically the big toe. If someone is reporting inflammation of their big toe, gout is something we should be looking at. Nursing intervention, so a low purine diet, so we're avoiding organ meats, wines, aged cheese, and alcohol. High fluid intake of 2,000 milliliters a day. Monitor joint range of motion, bed rest during painful attacks, and heat and cold applications for pain. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.